So what happened in Tibet in the 1409, approximately around 1400, was that the people, a, a movement came of tremendous charismatic power, you could say, where people en masse began to have such a vision. And they began to feel the presence of Buddha. Instead of thinking, oh, we're 2,000 years after our great historical teacher who saved everybody when, he, when they met him, and we never got to meet him, and so we're so unfortunate. And uh, now, um, however, he's here in other forms. And the symbol of that was when Tsongkhapa went, created this big festival in Lhasa, inviting people from all forms of spiritual practice or non-spiritual practice or whatever in Tibet to come to a two-week uh, first um, a lunar fortnight um, up to the full moon of the spring uh, lunar new year, uh, usually February, March, uh, maybe sometimes late January. And, um, uh, and uh, they, they, there was no secular authority at that time. The head monks from the big monasteries around Lhasa would come and they would be the sort of um, constabulary during that time. People would spend their whole time on vacation from whatever their jobs were. They'd be praying, attending festivals, going to teachings, etc., and uh, became like this two-week holiday every every um, every Lunar New Year. And um, during the first one, uh, Dzongkhapa, after having spent a year or two uh, using uh, offerings given to him because of his large number of students and the strong revival movement, you could say that great re revival that occurred in the, since the turn of the century. Uh, put all that money into refurbishing all the temples and all the monasteries and build, building new monasteries and refurbishing temples in Lhasa, especially the Jokong Temple, the, the one that was built a thousand years or 800 years earlier by Songzen Gampo. And uh, then he offered to the Buddha statue that the Tibetans believe came from the Emperor of China but was sent to the Emperor of China by, from India and depicts the actual Buddha, which of course I, you know, art historians don't agree with that, but that's what Tibetan culture thinks. And um, so then he offered crown, like a jeweled crown and a jeweled, like a royal ornaments anyway, to that thing. And so what that meant was that a sort of vision of the Buddha as present on the subtle body plane, what the Sambhogakaya, the beatific body. So Buddha is still present, in other words. We are in the ideal place. This is a new central country uh, here in Tibet because India has lost Buddhism by this time, and uh, you know the, the Muslim invasions there. And this is the real central place where the tradition continued. And therefore, there's no excuse. You can't say, well, I can't practice, I can't attain, I can't achieve a psychonaut status or whatever deep enlightenment, realization of selflessness or emptiness or whatever, whatever it is. Uh, I can't do it because I'm too late in history. I have to wait till Maitreya comes to 100,000 years from now, blah, blah, blah.